The key to success on the field and in your backyard is a comprehensive game plan. So if you're building a fence or a deck this year, trust a Terkstra coach to design, quote, or order the right materials for your project. Visit a Terkstra lumber near you to learn more. From the Tie Cats Audio Network, this is the Coach O Show with Luke Tasker. Welcome back to the Coach O Show with Luke Tasker. The Tie Cats getting ready on a short week here, their fifth game of the season at Edmonton this Thursday, the 13th, and that's a 9 p.m. start time for everybody here in the Hamilton area. Coming off their first win against Ottawa at home at Tim Hortons Field, Coach, congrats on the first win. It's a short week. You're back to work but that's all a little bit easier when you've put one in the win column. That's the goal. That's the goal every week, Luke. Uh, you know that. And so um, lots lots to clean up, but we love to clean up after wins. Yeah, easier to learn from a, from a win and uh, harder when you're having, having to learn uh, every week after a loss, but now you're uh, back on track and, uh, and uh, Ottawa falls to last uh, in the East. Um, what what stood out to you about that win that was different from the from those games getting away from you earlier in the season? Well, we weren't down double digits at halftime. We were down, I think it was ten nine or something like that. But I thought we did. You know, we strung together again a lot of. You know, we started fast. Let's just say that we started fast, mm-hmm. meaning we were able to move the ball. Uh, the end zone did elude us there, but we came away with points. And the defense kind of kept them at bay, kind of felt like we were uh, in control. I wouldn't say dominated, but we were in control of the field position battle where, you know, they were on long fields. They may have moved the ball a little bit, but ultimately they punted. Um, So, yeah, I thought that that was really what stood out. Like it was basically a 0-0 ball game at halftime, which we really haven't had. the other thing that's encouraging is, you know, we haven't had, since it is our first win, it, it's always encouraging when you win close games. Those are the ones that mm-hmm. usually separate the dominant seasons from the average seasons. And when you can win close games, it does matter. And while we didn't play the cleanest, um, you know, it, all penalties and analytics aren't equal. So, yeah, uh, did the penalties need to be cleaned up? Correct. But you know, when you're taking four time count violations, those are different violations than holding objectionable conducts. So all things aren't equal, but it all does equal. We got to find a way to be a little bit more disciplined there. But I do think down the stretch, we were more disciplined than they were. And, um, you know, it came down to the last play. That it, wasn't a saying or a cliche. It just yeah, really did. So sure did. And the biggest difference, Luke, we won. Yeah. Yep. You found, found a way to get it, uh, get it done. The... Uh, finishing drives, like you mentioned there at the beginning, what do you? What's the strategy? How do you? How do you coach that? I mean, what what do you? What are you talking about in an offensive room or in a team room about what you're going to change in order to finish those drives in the end zone? Well, I think every week it's different, as you know. Defenses, there's the game planning part. Um, you you obviously address the elephant in the room, and that is, you know, you can kick five field goals and win a few games, sure and score one touchdown and then there's going to be games where it's going to have to be flipped. You're going to kick one field goal and you're going to need four touchdowns. And so, you know, you address it as a whole and it's kind of like the whole part part, right? You you address the whole and then you and then you break down the parts. It's like what are we doing? Who are we trying to get the ball to? You know, and then the why? Why are we executing? What are we doing well? And what are we not? And so, um and then it comes down to when your number is called, make your play. Hmm. Right. So we did have a ball go off the hands. Um, we It wasn't our first read, but, you know, that's just football. Right. Yeah. And so whatever hand you're dealt, we got to find a way to get it in there. So it's a it's a collection of things. It's not like you can say, OK, we're going to run it. We're going to pass it. We're going to trick them. We're going to rub them. It's always predicated on on the film study, as you know. Um, but if you keep it results based, um, it hasn't been good enough. Uh, we know that. Uh, we like to coach off of wins. Yeah. Sticking with your offense there, uh, run game just looked different from the, from the previous weeks. Three times as many runs uh, against Ottawa as you had had before your bye week against Montreal. Over 100 yards for the team. James Butler gets involved. Are you going into that game saying, you know, if nothing else, let's make sure that we had we tried the run more? Or is it more so... 
you know, the first quarter was going well and you kept it on the ground a little bit. No, there was a, there was a definitely uh, a deliberate effort yeah. to do that that week. And uh, that includes you're going to have to take the good with the bad. So you're going to have to take the seven or 17 yard carries and you're going to have sometimes you're going to have to get, take the one yard and the two yard. Uh, that's just part of the deal. And uh, th- we did make a concerted effort to keep the ball on the ground a little bit more. And, you know, he's a special back, but credit the O-line and, mm-hmm. and the offensive staff for sticking with it. What about James Butler? I mean, he's obviously a new new to the to Ticat fans, had a great season last year out West and uh, pretty impressive in the game. I mean, he, he, he did. He had some good patience, some good explosions, sort of had multifaceted, you know, tool set for, for a back. Um, does a guy like that, is there frustration that you sense from him early in the season? Uh, and, and does a game like this help help a, a, a new Ticat sort of get involved with this team? Uh, JB is a pro. Uh, Butler's a pro. He, yeah, any competitive person, you know, you're, you're the ultimate team player too, you know. Um, but, you know, a few weeks of clear outs and, you know, the wife's going to hear somebody is going to have to listen. So I, you, you like the competitive, you know, yeah, the, yeah. The, you like the competitive nature. So it's not rooted in me, me, me. It's rooted in I want to help. And that's the majority of what I find. If you have the right people, that's how it's rooted. It's not I'm not getting my touches. It's um, how, you know, how can I help contribute? And he's just such a complete back. So, no, I don't sense frustration. But to think that he or any and it's not even about him it's again it's the competitive football player that may not be getting catches or playing time or reps that's in training camp even when you don't get reps it's like oh i feel like the walls are caving in on you Mm -hmm. and that's just competitive nature sometimes it's selfish selfishly motivated um but most of the time it's, it's rooted in just wanting to be a part of something so He's such a complete back, though. I mean, he was chipping, yeah, you know, and and catching, you know, swings and blocking and bringing the energy and spinning the ball in the field, and uh, just excited that he's a tie cat. Yeah, so so I mean, it's, he's exciting to watch uh, as the game progressed, and when he had the ball in his hands, it looked it looks different. It's a, it's a, an exciting piece of the uh, of the offense, you know. I don't know how to ask this question because there's, there's so many ways to go, but in just some way, the offense just looked a little bit different. I saw some just creative things. I mean, Felix Grand Gauthier was like out split wide, you know, you know, in the slot to set up to block for sort of a screen to Butler or a wide receiver screen. Uh, very qu- quick answers for Matt Schiltz earlier in the game. Can you just speak to the prep for that week against? Ottawa and and what you and your offensive staff sort of were planning to do in that game and why did it why did it go so well uh, this time around? Well, I think again it it started with with the running the football and and that really kind of set it up and uh, from there you know getting the ball out quick was important but then there's always the game within the game and that's the adjustments that need to be made uh, to their adjustments and so I think a lot of our answers were quick. And so there's always the game plan is what I'm saying. So what we talked about is, you know, plan A. And then, you know, it's okay, well, they didn't show this. You know, you're in constant communication during the game. Mm-hmm. You know, this is the third, second down that they brought the half back and they're pressuring. And so they may have brought that pressure, but not in that situation or that often. And so uh, when you have – and then you're breaking tendencies also, right? So if, you know, Felix has always been in the backfield – Okay, how are they going to adjust? You know, they got to adjust now to what we're doing. And so I think multiples always been something we've been done since, you know, 2013. Uh, but, you know, with the different packages and whatnot, uh, I think uh, it worked out well for us this past week. Mm-hmm. Uh, defensively, um, we were able to turn the page in a couple categories. You got to the quarterback and you and you took the ball away. And that's sort of been the story the, you know, you've had a great defense, uh, you know, players all over the place, all stars all over the place. But the lack of takeaways has been an ongoing issue. And against Ottawa, you took the ball away. Um, what can you say about that? What was it? What, what led to that uh, changing that in this Ottawa game? Players made plays. It was that, you know, we did some things. I'm not going to sit here and say uh, the scheme did everything. The players make the plays. 
uh, coaches prepare people and the player's job is to perform. And so, um, you know, we did a few different things up front. Uh, I thought we caught them on a few twist games. Uh, we didn't adjust real well to their quarterback, really, in my opinion, going through his maybe one or two sec first or second read and then running. Like that was pretty much it. Thought we were a little bit slow to adjust there. But when you talk about the energy the defense brought, the, you know, the short porches, giving them the ball, um, taking the ball out of their hands, you know, ultimately helping us lead to time of possession. And when we have the ball, we like our chances uh, of them not scoring. So can't say enough great things. We'd like to tackle a little bit better, but now I sound like a true coach thinking that the perfect game is going to be played. <laughs> uh, that type of an effort is going to win a lot more games than not. And it has something that it has been something that has eluded us a little bit, but this is, that's the, you've been around. That's kind of what Hamilton is built. That's, that's Tiger cat defense. Yeah. The sticks out to me is Richard Leonard, that, that seam across the middle there. And just like an unbelievably, you know, athletic acrobatic ability to keep the ball in the air. Yes. You know, I think, I think there was, there's a sense that there's some risk there. Talk to me about Richard Leonard in that sense. Is he does he know that he's is he trying to do that or is it just a is it just an athleticism that you can't teach that he just knows Simone's standing right there so he tips it to him? I think it's one of those things in coaching that you can't coach. I think some coaches think they can coach it, but it's called instincts and angles. Um, players have it or they don't, mm. you know, and that's just really the truth. You know, if you're instinctive, you're instinctive, you know. Um, I always use one of your examples. I know you don't like it, but I mean, I'll always remember a lot of your catches, but I always remember the one in Ottawa that got called back where you were looking over one shoulder, the ball's on the other shoulder. Now, I can't coach that into somebody that, hey, it, when it's there and the ball goes there, make sure you turn your head at about the 17th step and then throw your hands out late. Like, it just doesn't work. You can't coach that. So um, I'm not going to sit here and, and I'm going to say that Rich had his instincts hit the ball and then we emphasize running to the ball. And when you run to the ball, we always, you know, tips and overthrows, you know, great things have the potential to happen. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to be that person jogging on film, um, not running to the ball. And so I think Rich's instincts took over. And then obviously Simone was hustling to the football and made the play ultimately. That's great. Uh, that uh, catch that you mentioned was thrown by uh, my catch by <laughs> years ago was thrown by Jeremiah Mazzoli. And uh, mm -hmm. I just I figured to, on the Coach O show with Luke Tasker, you and I are two guys who think very highly of Jeremiah and that, you know, yes. I just I don't know. My heart was broken when I saw that and uh, my, you know, wishes and well wishes go to him and his family. And I hope that his recovery is quick and you were able to chat with him on the field uh you were you know yeah. that must have been a hard uh hard m a moment for for him it definitely was but in in pure jeremiah fashion you know with with all due respect and pride and everything i would say he he did his best to put to keep his emotions in check mm -hmm. and kind of have his mask on and be strong um i can't imagine how the heart was pounding and and what was going on inside but you know, after the game, I just, I almost got a little emotional, right? It was, you know, looking him in the, in the eye and just knowing his journey. You know, I made mention of that after the game, just everything from the transfers in college to the little, little, uh, interruption in his plan there to being in Edmonton, to being traded, to almost being on his way out the door to throwing three touchdown passes in a preseason game at McMaster against Montreal, which led to a contract extension. <laughs> and then just backing up to June Jones coming in and him stepping in and yeah. uh, like what a powerful testimony. And, you know, the reaction in the stadium was something that was in a movie, actually. You know, normally mm -hmm. it's, yeah, you, you clap when the person gets up and, you know, yeah. you know, if you know him personally or know somebody who knows him, you may take a knee. But there was genuine, like, whatever adjective you want to throw in there. Mm -hmm. Um, be it concern or whatever, just that's the respect that he garnered across this league. And uh, if that's his last football game, um, you know, competitively always, you don't rule any of that out. But if it is, um, if you can find anything, any silver lining in it, how about the fact that he came back to Tim Hortons Field and did it where 
he made most of his hay. Yeah. Yeah. Just a genuine respect. And it is, it is interesting. And, you know, we talked in the post game, we're pleased that, you know, the, the Hamilton, our listeners, you know, clearly have that respect too. And the stadium I thought handled it well. And, well, we just hope hope there's hope there's a, a quick recovery for for Jeremiah and for whatever's uh, for whatever's in his future. But but uh, yeah, what what a guy! And I have a lot of thanks to owe him in my career uh, as well. So um, <clears throat> yeah, well said, Coach. Um, quickly, we'll mention our Turkster Lumber sponsors here. The Coach O Show with Luke's Tasker is presented by Turkster Lumber. Check out the project coaches at Turkster Lumber. They can help with every part of your home rental, from designing a deck to ordering a new front door. As always, you can learn more at TurksterLumber.com. Uh, let's see here. Let's go on to a fan question, uh, Coach. Let's. All right. Listeners, don't forget you can send any question you want to ask Coach O to game day at TyCats.ca. Just put in the subject question for Coach O or the Coach O Show, and we'll ask one every week uh, uh, as we move our way through the season. So this one is from David and Jessica and Hamilton. Coach, Short week as you get ready for Edmonton. How do you guys practice differently knowing that you have to play a game so soon? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And I think it's about you have to know your football team and how banged up are you. Everybody's going to be sore. That's a given. So I think a, a heavily you know, laden veteran team, maybe there's times in my career where you didn't go on the field one day. And then maybe it was just meetings. Um, then there's the, you know, do we need to be sitting around not doing anything? Do you push them through that that threshold point? So for us, we gave the day off after the game where I think everybody needed time from coaches to equipment people to therapists. Just everybody needed a break. So there wasn't anything where normally we would have a rundown after the, after the game, even if it's light and watch the tape. Uh, we elected not to do that just give them the day off. Then the next day we came in and had extended meetings and went on the field for an hour, but that included stretch and walkthrough. So there wasn't a lot of team periods. That's just to get the look. And then today we'll do the same thing. So I guess uh, in short, we're going to be on the field probably two hours in total uh, in preparation for this, which is quite a bit less time than you would in a normal week. Mm -hmm. The, Another piece of uh, another difference for this week. Yes, it's a short week, but it's also a 9 p.m. start time. Uh, you know, for Hamilton time. What do you get? What's a what's a strategy as you travel? As you're getting ready for the day of the game, is there something different that you guys do with such a late uh, kickoff? You know, we've we've done it all different ways. You know, we've, we've tried to tell people to make sure you're awake and know when the kickoff time is and. You know, there's even been times, I think maybe when you were here, when Ike uh, brought, you know, people, he'd invite people to right. the stadium at certain times when we were, and this was when we were going all the way out west to BC, mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, even another another hour uh, later for us. But um, no, there's not a lot. It, it, they're prof everybody's professionals and you do make mention of it and you understand that it is a, a later kickoff. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's football when they kick the ball off, um, none of that matters. None of that matters. But you do want to make sure that, you know, you have a little bit of stamina at the end. Stamina at the end. Yeah. One more for uh, uh, regarding Edmonton here, Coach. No secret that they're struggling uh, in Edmonton. The Elks are, are, are have been looking for wins for uh, quite a while now, this season and into last season, and it's been quite the uh, qu quite a struggle there. You're going there to try to get your second win of the season. How, how do you keep that losing team losing? Well, you, you can't look at their record. You can't. You got to take this game just as serious. They're going to, you know, I'm sure they have it circled like, you know, well, this Hamilton's a beatable team. You know, we got to take advantage of this. We're at home and, and all those things. And the storylines are all there. Uh, for us, it's the next game and we got to string together two in a row. And, you know, we have goals and, aspirations too and this is just the next game on the schedule so um we would like to get a winning team losing if the if the team we were playing was undefeated mm -hmm. right so rather than focusing on keeping losing teams losing um it's more they're the next team on the schedule let's 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 get out of our own way and you know clear our minds 
clean up some of the things and let's continually keep getting better. I know that's the the saying, but it's so true, right? Just because you're, you know, you can't confuse your path right now with your destination. And that's what we're not doing. We're going to continually get better and keep working and grinding and Edmonton just has to be next. And then before you know it, the next game will be here too. But um, we want to control this practice right now. And when Edmonton shows up, we know we're going to get their best. We're always going to expect to come out with one more point. And, you know, that was the messaging to the team last week. Like right now, we're not that football team that's going to blow people out. We're just not. So you better embrace it and, and find a way to win. That's great. Coach, it's a pleasure as always. Thanks a lot for your time and good luck with the uh, week of prep as you guys get ready to travel out west. Awesome, Luke. Thanks. Look forward to it. See you next week. Another episode of the Coach O Show with Luke Tasker is in the books. Let us know your thoughts. Email us at gamedayatiecats.ca. Coach O and Luke are back next week to discuss the latest from the locker room. Subscribe to the Tiecats Audio Network on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.